free browser extension that saves you money when you shop online. Honey scans the internet for coupons and other discounts, and then like magic, it automatically applies into your card at checkout. It knows about every coupon code, sale, or discount at over 37,000 sites, like Amazon, Ulta, Asos, Forever 21, Urban Outfitters, and more. Here's an example of me buying some clothes at Asos. I go to the checkout page, Honey pops up, all I have to do is click one button, bam! Honey saves me 26 bucks. And just since I talked about Honey in my last series, those of you who added it saved an average of $48. So in total, that's over $1.6 million shit. Again, Honey's totally free, installs in two clicks, and it saves you money. Go to joinhoney.com slash Are you really filming? Are you serious? For no reason, but I am. I love that. that <laughs> you have to be filming everything in case something scary happens, like an alien crashes through the window and goes, all right, it's time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, all right I've got it. Yeah. <laughs> conspiracies we're going to talk about, but I, it's really weird. I keep hearing this, like, noise. Ew. I didn't pick up the phone. Wait, what? Are you you heard me say that's my mom? What's I said that's my mom, and then I pressed yeah. the answer. That doesn't make any sense. Wait, let's put it on speakerphone. Wait, what are you freaking out Wait, say, say what just happened. Hi. Okay. Hey, this is my mom. Um, well, mom, I saw you calling, and then they said, is that the postmate? And I said, no, that's my mom, and then I answered the phone. And you picked up and said, were you making fun of me? And I said, no, of course not. Why'd you say that? And you said, because, well, what, tell them what you heard me say. That's my mom. I didn't pick up the phone yet. How would that make any sense? Oh. Was it pre-connected? <laughs> I don't know the magic phone. I see what you're saying. It's the scary thing. They don't even know. We haven't even yeah. Wait, I literally don't know what you're talking about. This is the conspiracy that we were going to film tonight. We, well, we just did it. Sorry, Mom, you're in a video. What? That is, that is wild. Well, I don't know exactly what it is yet, The but phone is always listening. Always. That is crazy. How did that just happen, by the way? That's insane. Um, my phone's Something. <laughs> the phone was already like recording in such and a I way where it got through to her. Yeah. And I know that she's not lying because I saw I saw him not answer it yet. That was crazy. Yeah. Well. <laughs> These results are not fanciful. Reaching into every household in the land, they take the meat home. They're not imaginary, they are actual and real. Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back. Now today we're going to be talking about a lot of different theories, some involving big celebrities that have had their faces and voices stolen. We're also going to be talking about some of the dark secrets involving some of your favorite childhood TV shows. Also, subliminal messages that have never been caught until now. And some theories involving one of the worst disasters in California history. You know, I saw on Twitter there's so many people being like, oh, it's only rich people, like celebrities. Like, this is not. This is like a normal neighborhood. This is like... Yeah, middle class. Like The average working person, you know? Then we see what happens when I was with a few friends and we accidentally uncovered an iPhone theory that none of us could believe was real. Oh, ah! That's crazy! <laughs> and just to kick things up a notch, this isn't just a typical conspiracy video. Oh my god, this is her. This is her. This is just part one. And in the next part, I'm going to be leaving this room and we're going to be falling farther down the rabbit hole than we ever have before. Now, before we get started, once again, I just have to say, these are all just theories, none of them are facts. And they're not meant to hurt anyone, any company, or any Zepettos. So buckle up, because it's been a while and we have a lot of theories to get to. And I just have to say, it feels really good to be back. All right, let's get started.
Yeah. It's rewind time. Celebrities have been having their faces stolen for years. Whether it was a look-alike on Hollywood Boulevard. About the season finale last night, and there was shit. A parody of them in a movie. Or more recently, a fake version of them eating a burrito in a park. He's uh, eating a burrito like he's eating corn in the cob or playing harmonica. Or a hologram of them performing an entire concert after they died. <laughs> All of this is nothing. But recently, things have gotten even darker, and there's a new way to steal your favorite celebrity's identity. Welcome to the world of deepfakes. So deepfakes is when a computer can put a celebrity's face on any person they want. I know, it's pretty creepy. And for some reason, there's tons of Nicolas Cage ones. Him in Star Trek, him in Superman. On my world, it means hope. Well, here it's an S. Him as a dancing Amy Adams. You think I'd lay down and die, oh no not I. Or the creepiest one, him as The Rock. Uh, phone was just blowing up and you get a mix. Now making a fake digital version of a celebrity's face is nothing new. Usually it's done in movies when they want to bring somebody back from the dead. Actor Philip Seymour Hoffman will live on as his character in the next two installments of The Hunger Games after dying before filming was completed. And the one I remember the most, when they created a digital version of Paul Walker's face, they actually used his own brother so that when they put the face over it, it would look even more realistic and even more like Paul. On set, a baseline performance was created with Paul's brothers. There's even a commercial where they created a digital version of Audrey Hepburn. And when you see the commercial, it literally looks like they brought her back from the dead. It's crazy. But nope, it's all just computer magic. So they used women who kind of looked like her, but they didn't. It is all CGI. Now all of these movies use technology where they have huge computers and it costs millions of dollars and months to create. But now with a certain computer application, this can be done by anyone, anywhere, in a matter of hours, and for free. And it's called Fake Hacker. We've democratized access to incredibly powerful software. Almost anyone can do it. Almost anybody can do it. And that's a game changer. So Fake App analyzes thousands of still images of somebody's face. And then it uses that data to create a digital mask that can be placed over any pre-existing face. Now just to show you how good this is, here's a clip from Saturday Night Live of an actress playing Hillary Clinton. <laughs> This is going so well. Okay, now look at this clip that somebody made using Fake App, where they put Hillary Clinton's real face on top of the Saturday Night Live actress. This is going so well. <laughs> yeah, it's so real that if you just saw that clip alone, you would think that was just a Hillary Clinton clip. Now, Fake App isn't just for fun memes and movie clips. No, don't call me baby girl. You don't fucking know me. I'm not your fucking baby girl. Anyways. The most popular category of deep fakes on the internet is deep fake porn. So, are you ready? <laughs> I know I am. Now, I don't want to get sued, so I'm not really going to show these clips, and if I do, I'm going to show a very small, cropped-in version. I do you want to see more. <laughs> but basically, people were using fake app, and then putting those celebrity faces on real porn stars in real porn videos. And some of them look so real, it's crazy. I'm feeling great. <laughs> a little nervous. And it has everybody. Emma Watson, Chloe Grace Moretz, even Flo, the progressive lady. That's how far this goes. It's free. Wanna try? But it's not just celebrities that have to deal with this. It's normal girls too who have had their faces stolen. Noelle Martin is a girl who had her face put on dozens of porn videos and she had no idea. And then when she found out, it almost ruined her life. This is the deep fake video of me performing oral sex on a man. I don't know who the man is. I, I, I think I felt helpless. It frightens me. Now something that could affect all of us is deep fakes could be used in politics. But take a look at this. That's President Trump's real face on the right, digitally stamped onto Baldwin's performance. Testing, testing. This program can change facial expressions in real time. And now I can create the President of the United States saying just about anything I want. That's terrifying. This is an actual danger. Like, this could be a problem. And it's such a big problem that even Obama himself has spoken out about it. We're entering an era in which our enemies can make it look like anyone is saying anything at any point in time. Or has he spoken out about it? 
President Trump is a total and complete dipshit. Now, you see, I would never say these things. Someone else would. Someone. Like Jordan Peele. That's right. That was actually a video made by Jordan Peele to show just how realistic these are getting. Stay woke, bitches. Now let's put aside politicians and celebrities for a second. Think about this being used in your everyday life. Anyone could make a deep fake of any person that they don't like, and they could have it do whatever they wanted. They could make one of their principal, or any teacher, any boss, any ex-friend, or even you. Now this is gonna get really dark. Let's imagine a scenario. Let's say there's an angry woman who just found out that her asshole husband cheated on her. So to get revenge, she hires an actor who has her husband's body type, and she has him come to her house and pretend to beat her up. All while the security camera in the living room is rolling the whole time. Then, imagine her finding somebody who's really good at making deepfakes. And then she has them make a digital mask of her husband's face and put it on top of the actors. Now she has footage of her husband assaulting her that she could use to get him arrested. Sounds crazy, but framing people for crimes is something that's happened since the beginning of time. And with fake app, it seems to be getting easier. Now, as of now, fake app is still pretty complicated. But lucky for us, there's tons of similar technology inside the apps on our phone. I mean, just look at the Snapchat face swap feature. Hey, what's up, you guys? It's me, Shane. Oh my, my god! god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! In a matter of seconds, you can put anybody's face on top of yours. And it looks pretty good. Ah! And just to test it out, I put my face somewhere it's never been before. YouTube Rewind. Yeah! It's rewind time. <laughs> oh my god. Is this what you wanted? You know who I would have asked for? <laughs> what do we do? K pop! Ooh! Then it just got weird. Whoa! 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 Oh, that was me. Whoa. Get on, Liza! Now, when it comes to the dark world of deep fakes, there's currently no law against making them. And the scariest part is this could actually lead to the end of the world. And I'm not even being dramatic. Just listen to this horrifying and very realistic scenario that was explained by a professor of computer science at Dartmouth. Imagine the following scenario. Video is produced of Donald Trump saying, I've just launched nuclear weapons against North Korea. My fellow Americans. That video goes onto Twitter and goes viral in 30, 60 seconds. North Korea responds in another 60 seconds. Deep fakes result in war? Honestly, I don't think that's a stretch. I'm sorry. So you might be thinking, okay, Shane, they can make a deep fake of my face, but they don't have my voice. Well, that's not true. Adobe calls this an early stage research project, and this Adobe program can create new audio from text. There's new technology that has come out that can create a digital version of anybody's voice. And in part two of this video, you'll see us putting it to the test. Whoa. Wait, what does it say? We have to put it in a sentence and then it reads it back to my voice. Is it really gonna do that? I don't know. Do you think, okay, wait, oh my God. My voice is ready. Oh my god! So, are you ready? <laughs> I know I am. My name is Raquel Roper and I am an adult producer and performer. You ventured into my realm. know what this was. I was watching Shane's videos. I am a fan and I saw that he had a new trailer for a series. Then towards the end, I saw one of my videos. Are you ready? <laughs> and what looked like my face, but it, it wasn't my face. It was <laughs> it was Selena Gomez's face and I just I just couldn't believe it. You're taking a person's content who the artists 
work and you are turning it into something that I didn't want it to be. Selena Gomez has not given consent to have her face morphed into an adult video. I don't know where this video came from. I don't know who did it or what and there is no way for me to take legal action against this and I think that's what the scariest part of it all is. Uh, I'm just shocked. I just don't think that people realize how harmful it can be. It can really affect people. Allegedly, Selena Gomez have a secret sex tape. I would totally watch that. Uh, in a lot of different ways. Like, I'm super sensitive with my mom, and so I would never even say something that she could pick up on. That's why I was like, no, it's my mom, and then picked up. That's tea. <laughs> yeah, we could test it. We could, like, have somebody go to, like, part of the house where you can't hear them, and then call each other, and then start talking. You got that soundproof room. <laughs> Let's do it. I just heard my hammer. Hello? So, what did you say before you picked up? Who knows my favorite three times? <laughs> I heard the last one, but did you pick up? No, you didn't hear who knows my favorite. Yeah, I heard my favorite. Hello? Hello? Uh uh. No, no, no. I just, I just said hello when I picked up. Oh, but you didn't really hear. She yeah, I did. Hear. Yes, we did. You heard it. Hello? Did he? Yeah. yeah. Wait, okay. Count. One, two, three, and then pick up. Okay, oh, that's very good. God, you're clever. Okay. <laughs> okay, bye. Hello? Anything? No, I just heard hello. Well, it happens once tonight. I, we literally all experience it together. So let's try one where we switch it. Okay, sounds good. One, two, three. Hello? I just got hello, just a normal traditional hello. Uh, call me back again in, in, uh, in like five seconds. Okay. Have a theory. Did you say five minutes? Five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> he had the ringer on when his mom called. It was just hello? The ringing was the craziest I've ever heard in my life. It was like, literally, I've never heard it in my life. Wait, what? What do you mean? The ringing was like... So you didn't hear anything before you were answered? No. Um, maybe they're on to you now. Like, if it's listening or something, maybe it's like, oh, we're not going to fuck up again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Alright. Alright. Okay. Hello? Hello? Well, are you on any apps? Because it said that the microphone's always going. Garrett was on Postmates. What if you like... Okay. So when he got that call from his mom, you saw that he hadn't picked up the phone yet? That's so wild. You want to show him the live photo thing yet? Let's talk about the Woolsey fire. The hillside, I just, it's just an eerie sight to see. On November 8th, 2018, the Woolsey fire began to spread. Wow. 
Jesus. It really seems like we're chasing it. Um, it moves so fast, uh, so aggressive, and the fire behavior is just so intense. It lasted 13 days and destroyed over 1,600 buildings and almost 100,000 acres of land. This is terrible. This is a whole, this is apocalyptic. And then Barry, oh my gosh, if you head over, Barry, head over, all the way over past this truck here, there are flames. I mean, that's see oh. how dangerously close that they are coming to. Three people's lives were lost and over 300,000 people were evacuated during that time. Hello, it is November 9th. We are currently getting ready for um, an evacuation. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Those houses are on fire. Oh, okay, go. oh my God, oh my God, please God. Holy shit, you guys, we're leaving. We had to wear masks because, oh my God, look at that. Oh my God, okay, we're leaving. Very apocalyptic. Wow, okay, we're okay, we're okay, okay for right now. What's up, man? This is it. Now these fires were very close to home for me for a few reasons. On November 8th, me and Ryland were also moving into our new house. And a few hours later, we were told to evacuate because a fire was heading toward us. The movers leave and we find out that we have to evacuate literally the second we finished moving in. So it's jumping. They're, yeah. they're blocking the freeway right now, you can see. For that 13 day period, the Woolsey fire was my life. What's gonna happen next? Like my mom, my brother, all these, my family all lived very close to this fire. All I did was watch fire footage and fire maps and watch the news 24 hours a day. I was literally tracking the fire every second. Now to the latest on the Woolsey fire. It is this now home at the corner is burned and uh, the home next door is burning as well. You can and I still have so many questions and there's so many things that don't make sense. It was crazy, and I know I, we're fortunate enough to be sitting under the house that's still standing, and so many people are not. It's so hard to understand. But before we get into the theories, I just have to remind you, this was a very real event. A lot of people lost their homes, some people lost their lives. Heartbroken, it's really hard for me even to continue talking because I cannot imagine coming home and seeing everything you have gone like this. And when you go into the houses as well, it's really, really sad. I mean, everything's just blacked out and it's, there's water pouring down and you know, you just see chairs and photographs and squeeze your loved ones tonight because in a moment's notice things can change i think just the sense of of it being our home you know just the memories that we built and to put in perspective i wanted to go to some of the areas that were affected just to show what it looks like show how real it is and just see it in real life and it was devastating Pretty sure it's the exit off Las Virgins. That's not a gated community. So we are going down Las Virgins, uh, which is one of the main roads that was affected by the fire. The whole thing was closed off. What is going like on? Really I have a friend whose whole neighborhood is gone. Like all the houses on his street, except for his, which is crazy. But he can't even move back yet because they have to do a whole like clearing out the neighborhood and like testing the air and making sure it's safe. And it's gonna take him like weeks. So he just has to wait. Can you imagine living in a neighborhood that like all the houses are gone except for yours? Like that's so. What's scary? Mind boggling. So how does that happen? How does like every house on the street catch fire except for one? What does that mean? He wasn't protecting it. He wasn't, you know, hosing it down. 
it just didn't light. This is what I was telling you, like my doctor's office is right This was where shit was like bad. So we're going into a neighborhood where some houses burned down. I don't want to be disrespectful, but I do, I do want to see this in real life. Because I feel like when you see stuff like this on the news, it's like hard to comprehend it. people celebrities like this is not this is like a normal neighborhood this is like the vast majority of people affected are regular folks the working the average working person you know fuck ah. ah. that is like like so do we know how these fires started have they said like it was like a power plant or something but meantime, we're, we're learning a little bit more about the, the fire up in the north, and it may have been sparked by an electrical malfunction. Where one of their machines supposedly sparked, and the winds just picked it up and escalated it, but that's just one of the things that I saw. The view from everyone's backyard is just a rock mountains. They will not say specifically that the fire started because of that outage. This 
is like, I mean, look at the mountain in front of it. It doesn't say like, don't no trust with us. Again, hello. Yeah. Why are you so mean? Do you say that about me? <laughs> Every time I go. <laughs> but everyone does that. Like when their work's calling, they're like, F word, F, like, oh shit, 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 shit. And then <laughs> I got fired from every job I had. Maybe that's why. Yeah. Maybe that's why. <sighs> no, that's not why. <laughs> okay, so similar to the thing of, you know, being able to hear before you answer, there's another thing that I don't know if you guys know about this. I didn't. Let me get these Oreos out of the way. Well, okay. <laughs> Be with you in a second. <laughs> so, turn on my live thing. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Okay. Oh, is that a thing? So, <laughs> oh, no. Said, I, took, I took the picture after three. Yeah. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Uh -huh. One, two, three. <gasps> One, two, three. Wait, there's sound? So it's like a video. It was recording What's three seconds lie? before I pressed one, two, three. Take the picture. Yeah, a live doesn't Wait, mean... well we missed that. You only showed Garrett. <laughs> <laughs> no, everyone saw. Oh, I know, but I didn't okay, see that right? picture. Yeah. I'll take it to Andrew, right? So take it. One, two, three. <gasps> I took it right up to three. One, two, three. Wait! What if you were doing something crazy? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what if, that like, is spooky. Is that on all the phones? Yeah, so their Apple came out with a statement and they were like, oh, well, yeah, we record you know, three seconds before and three seconds after. How, so how do they know? know? Exactly. On top of the status bar, you see a new icon. Those three concentric circles lit up yellow. By default, it's on. You just take pictures. And now they're live photos. They say like, well, no, uh, yes, yes, technically when your camera's out, your phone is always recording, but then what? it disappears unless you save it. I do the grossest thing in the bathroom with my camera out. Ew. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh my god. No, it's not like that. <laughs> oh my god. Wait, yeah. Like, the grossest, like, yeah. when you look at stuff look for things. <laughs> They're like storing the information. What do you? Yes. <gasps> I mean, why wouldn't they? But what do they do with that? Like, how many people have iPhones? Are they really looking? Every, at? like everybody. That's yeah. actually like next level crazy. Yeah. At this point, that's just the truth. It's not even. Yes. <gasps> that is crazy. On my phone too, I held like a ghost, then took the photo. Mm -hmm. Don't get freaked out. It was just me. <laughs> we really can't eat from the stack. No. Okay, I have another one for you. You hear it? Goodbye, Now 
I'm gonna warn you, this next theory is dark and probably one of the most unsettling ones we've ever talked about on this channel. And this theory starts with subliminal messages in children's shows. I am now going to assault your mind with subliminal messages. Now we've talked about this before, but usually we talk about the sexual messages that are hidden in cartoons. <laughs> By far, SpongeBob SquarePants has the most. There's jokes about prison, don't drop them, Patrick licking a pile of sand, and plenty more. Who wants to lick my cheeks? But those are all just jokes and clearly hidden for adults. Oh yeah. But there's a lot of other darker messages that have been hidden in this show, and most of them involve suicide. I can't seem to get happy. Maybe this will help. That's right. In a 2001 episode called Are You Happy Now? Squidward is seen suffering from depression. Wake me when I'm dead. There's scenes of him walking around in a dazed state, and there's even scenes where it looks like he's trying to kill himself. Like this one where he puts his head in an oven. I just can't seem to get happy. <laughs> but by far the darkest moment is when SpongeBob goes over to his house to make sure he's okay. No, I'm really worried. And then he says this. Well, at least we know he's still alive. Yeah, that might be some of the darkest shit I've ever seen on TV, let alone a kid show. But it's not just this episode. There's tons of other episodes that have suicide references too. What's the point of going on? There's an episode where Plankton tries to get himself hit by a car. Go away, cheesehead. Can't you see I'm trying to get run over? There's an episode where SpongeBob stabs himself to death. In ancient times, one would fall on their sword by way of apology. Yeah, that's almost glorifying suicide. There's even an episode where a character goes to kill himself, and then they say this. Someday, but not today. Someday, but not today, making it seem inevitable. But then, as I was looking into it, I found that suicide references have been in a lot more cartoons than just Spongebob. Here's the ending scene from a Looney Tunes cartoon called Bare Feet from 1949. <laughs> well, there's still one way out. <laughs> I'm going to be free. Free at last. Yeah, free at last. Once again, glorifying suicide, making it look exciting. We've died together. And there are hundreds. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna blow my brains out. I mean, Bugs Bunny. Daffy Duck. There was nothing for the Scarlet Pumpernickel to do but blow his brains out. To which he says. Woody Woodpecker. If I had a gun, I'd shoot myself. Daisy Duck. Goodness, I didn't want to live. And a bunch of cartoon episodes just ending with characters killing themselves for no reason. I know, this sounds crazy, but it goes even farther back. There's a Mickey Mouse comic from 1930 where Mickey gets threatened because Minnie is getting hit on by another guy. What you need is someone like me to protect you, Minnie. Oh, huh? now I know I don't like that guy. Then he sees them kissing. Good gosh, say it isn't so. Then he falls into a depression. Gosh, well I never thought Minnie would fall for somebody else. Everybody seems happy. Why does the world have to be down on me? And then he decides the only option is to kill himself. Oh, what's the use? She doesn't care for me anymore. What is there to live for? Without Minnie, I might as well end it all. The comic even goes so far to show Mickey setting up a homemade suicide contraption using a shotgun, two chairs, and a string, which actually did become a common way that people would kill themselves. Goodbye, Minnie. Goodbye, cruel world. One, two, uh -huh. oh. <laughs> Then he tries to jump off a bridge. Goodbye, cruel world! Then when that attempt didn't work, he closed all the windows and closed all the doors, turned on the gas. I'll turn on this gas and end it once and for all. So he could pass out and die in his sleep. Goodbye, Minnie. Goodbye, cruel world. And he even tries to hang himself. Gee. I'm sure having a tough time trying to put an end to myself. 
but my worries will soon be over. In that comic strip alone, there's four different examples of how to kill yourself. Even in this Daisy Duck cartoon, you can see there's six options for suicide. A gun, hanging, knife, poison, grenade, and a bomb. So what's the theory? Well, what if they've been planting it inside our minds since we were kids? That suicide is an option. So when you hit a fork in the road and you don't know what to do, you have a backup plan. Because the first five years is when your brain develops the most and it's the most impressionable. So wouldn't it make sense to start planting that idea then? Maybe this will help. Yes, people have severe depression and suicidal thoughts, me included in the past. But maybe some of us think of it as an option because when we were kids, we were told it would set us free. Free! Free at last! So why would they want to play at suicide in our brains? Well, some people think it might be a form of population control. Some people think it's to keep society in a weak, depressed, and fearful state. Because a weakened society is easier to control. I mean, think about it. We have kids who are depressed, and then we're medicating them and putting them on pills, and then sitting them in front of a TV where they're watching their favorite cartoon right. character kill themselves, and also making it seem exciting. Goodbye, everyone. I'll remember you all in therapy. I mean, the global antidepressant market is estimated at over $11.6 billion. The government and the economy love depression. And we also glorify things like money, fame, success. Is that what you're going for? I mean, I'd love to be a billionaire, sure, why not? Guys, we are washing the Supreme Ferrari right now. Who pissing on their money, Ain't nobody doing that shit like me, fuck boy. So if someone happens to not achieve those things, now in the back of their heads, they know that suicide is an option. I reckon I ain't got no alternative. I mean, just think about the board game that was targeted to us as kids. Anything can happen in the game of life. The game of life, where the goal is to succeed, and if you don't, you lose. Where will your choices take you in the game of life? To win the game of life, you need to make money. Just make my pay. Oh, yeah. Get famous. Be a movie star. Do better than those that you're playing against. I went to the I made fifty thousand in the stock market. I went to the poor farm. That's life. Literally, the commercial says. Be a winner of the game of life. I mean, come on. And in the original version of Life in 1860 that was created by Milton Bradley, it literally had suicide on the board as an option. That's Life! Now it's not just suicide that's being poured into kids' pure, very multiple brains. It's darkness in every single form. Just think about the games we used to play as kids. Ring Around the Rosie. Ring Around the Rosie. A game about people who die from the Black Plague. Bridge. London Bridge is falling down. A song about a huge bridge falling and killing everyone. Iron bars will bend and break, bend and break, bend and break. Ouija, a game that makes it fun to contact evil spirits in your house. Look, it's spilling something. Go ahead, ask another question. This is too weird. You are moving. You, know you guys are wrong, right? It's too weird for me. Then, of course, you have Twister. Twister! The last game that's marketed as a way for you and your friends to get way too close. Twister, the game that ties you up in knots. I can't even imagine the amount of creepy uncles or cousins who have wanted to play that game on Thanksgiving. Twister ties you up in a knot. A game that pretty much grants anybody permission to wrap their body parts around you. It's wicked hot. You gotta get it. It's the hottest game around. Of course, you have the darkest of them all, Hangman. A game where you have to guess the correct word or your little stick figure will be hanged. And the darkest part is that this classroom game is actually based on a real life game from the 18th century. Criminals that were sentenced to death by hanging would play a game called Rite of Words and Life. So the game would start during a public hanging where the executioner would choose a word. And the criminal would have to guess the word by choosing letters. And if the criminal guessed the word right, then he would live. And if he guessed the word wrong, Hangman, let's go over it. If you're not aware of what Hangman is, first you draw your diagram, the hook that is, but hopefully 
he does get home. Students have to guess the letters of a hidden word, and if they get the letter wrong... X? I'm sorry, X is not a part of this animal's name. Then one more part of the hanging man is added. Now it's the head. Once you finish off the body, that's the end of the game. You decide you want him to smile, although he probably won't be smiling on a hook. The most messed up part about all of that is that almost all of the criminals at that time were illiterate. Which means they didn't even have a chance. And that game was just a way to publicly humiliate them before they died. And it's not just games that have dark undertones. What's the first thing you remember hearing as a kid? Nursery rhymes. Walk by a baby. A song where a baby's cradle is swinging in a tree and then the branch breaks and the baby falls to the ground. Humpty Dumpty. A song about a guy who had a great and nobody can save him because he's dead. Could it put Humpty together again? It's raining, it's pouring. He went to bed. A guy hits his head and then dies. And bumped his head and couldn't get up in the morning. And one of the most disturbing, Peter Peter Pumpkin Eater. A song about a guy whose wife doesn't want him. Has a vibe but could not keep her. So he holds her hostage in a pumpkin. He put her in a Pumpkin shell, there he kept her very well. Yeah, a song that normalizes holding a woman against her will. And I mean, even looking back at London Bridge, there's a reference of locking a woman up. Lock her up, lock her up. Now with the internet, kids aren't watching TV as much, but don't worry. There's tons of content on YouTube for kids, and that has plenty of dark messages. Like murder, suicide, abortion, violence, and for some reason, a lot of vomiting. Whoa, I have never seen anyone throw up so much. Then when you're a teenager, you're once again filled with the thoughts of suicide in movies, <laughs> TV shows. Hey, it's Hannah. And now internet challenges. Remember the blue whale challenge tonight? A brand new threat to the safety of your family and your kids. If you all want to get a sense for all these challenges, here are just a few of them. Carve yes on your leg. Do something painful to yourself. Don't talk to anyone all day. So many of our teenagers feel more lonely even though they're on social media more. Everyone questions as a society, how do we have so much evil, death, hatred, depression, destruction? But do we even have to question it when we look back at our childhoods now as adults and think about what was being put right in front of our eyes. No. No, I've seen everything. So, what's the overall theory? Well, the only way to keep a society easy to control is through chaos. The only way to get them to vote for you is by fear. Lock her up. A nuclear war could break out any minute. The only way to get you to unite is through tragedies. The only way to keep them unhappy is by constantly showing them unrealistic expectations of looks. Hey, hottie. Looking hot. So hot. Money and success. Yeah. A society that's peaceful is not a society that can be controlled. So what do you do to make sure that chaos and fear continues? Make sure to show children just how scary and dark the world is from a very early age. A mother bought her toddler this princess wand at the dollar store behind me. Imagine her surprise when the curious little girl peeled back the foil to find this image of a girl cutting herself inside. If you look close enough, it's not a drawing. It's an actual picture of the girl slitting her wrist. I want to know how, how they think that that is suitable for a child. Okay, so there's this app um, called Zippetto. You heard of it? Oh, the people! Yes. Yeah, there's like memes like, okay, I saw this meme with like a gross popsicle that was melted, and then the package, it was cute, and it was like, me in real life, and then me and my Zippetto. I'm messing this up. <laughs> okay, well, Zippetto, there's a theory that it's actually tracking you, <laughs> and that it's listening to everything, and it's recording everything, and it's like, actually like kind of a scary app, and a lot of people but are deleting it. It's for kids, though. It is stalking you through your phone, if you don't believe me. Just sit there and listen to it. You will hear breathing. We deleted that. Well, I downloaded it. I haven't opened it yet. Wait, is it gonna know <laughs> stuff about you like already? <laughs> All right, so let's see. For like Wait. App. Okay, it created here. So you know, yeah. Dude, these are creepy. Yeah, I hate the name. Let's start. Oh, sorry. <laughs>
<laughs> In order to start, we have to have access to your camera. Okay, that's fine, right? Okay. Gender. I mean, oh, there's only two? I thought this was woke. <laughs> Why did you think that? <laughs> Why are you foggy? Wait, okay, so I'm taking a picture of myself. Oh, ew! Ew! Wait, what? <laughs> is that supposed to be me? <laughs> yeah! Hey. Well, good news is if you lose your hair, you look good. Yeah! Oh, so it's just you in like two years. <laughs> He's thin! <laughs> Congratulations! Wait, no, no, no. Honestly, though, why does it not look like me? Is it supposed to? Well, here's the thing. It makes you submit a picture, and it's like, oh, we're gonna make something that looks just like you. That looks fucking terrible. That Wait, not when you put glasses on me, if like I did it, I don't know. Let me download some pedal. Okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe it just wants a picture of my face. I just was like, that's not me. All right, let's keep going. Oh, okay. So you can customize it. All right. Wait. Oh, just downloading the hit apps of pedal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it takes too long to load. Yeah, but also, <laughs> I don't think we're supposed to be dragging the app. This isn't a Zepeto review. And that leads us to our first sponsor of the day. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's free and it looks really colorful and fun. <laughs> Wait, where am I? Oh, oh. <gasps> would you find others in the street? What does that mean? That looks like Erica Costello. <laughs> I mean, it did, I'm just saying. Wait, please. Hello. Wait, what is this? Am I talking to people? Oh, okay, I'm on the street. What? Whoa! What do I say? Oh, they're all speaking other languages. Okay, well. Ew, look what it did to me! Isn't <laughs> <laughs> that close? Okay, now here's the other scary part. So the reason people think it's tracking you and might be listening is because while you're playing with the app, if you put your ear to the phone, you'll hear static or white noise. I do! Do you? Oh! You hear it? It's small. <gasps> Here, listen. To yeah, me. it's like like a little sure. like crumbly noise. Off in the distance. Oh. And Wait, can I hear yours? What does static mean though? Like what is that? Well that's the same noise that you'll hear if your phones are tapped. Oh you can maybe I can ask them a question. Oh, and they'll get answer in a text. I mean, it makes sense, right? If you're an app developer and you're just like, ah, oh, oh, oh. well, it's like the real world or something. They're like, I'm not an app developer. Do you work for Zepeto? <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, I'm sure it's probably so. Is it in there, like, disclaimer? Are you so talking to like, them? Like, no. Are you talking to Oh, it's post me delivery now. <laughs> Wait, so do you think like someone's on the other side of the computer right now talking to me? Yes! Oh! Like, hey! Ask them something. Ew, they're probably like getting our cord mints. Delete. <laughs> <laughs> so, that static noise that you hear when you're playing this app, you can actually hear that same static noise pretty much all the time with your phone. I'm scared! I mean, I don't hear it, but I'm still scared. <laughs> Wait, do you really not hear it? Because I hear it all the time on my phone. Well, are you on any apps? Because it said that the microphone's always going. See? Mine, I turned my app off. You still hear it? Oh, <gasps> weird! So Wait! I don't know what that means. I mean, I guess it means that the phone's always listening, but we already knew that. Because think about it this way. When you say, hey Siri, how did she hear that? She, she must be listening all the time. Why don't you have to turn that feature on, the hey Siri feature? Well, does do you? Well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Because, hey Siri, like that means to hear that, she has to have been listening the whole time. Everything. Right? Yeah, but Apple's pretty forward about that. They say that they only go with that phrase and then only what you say. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Much there, like, <laughs> makes sense. It's falling apart as I say it out loud. <laughs> yeah, because it's like, well, yeah, she hears that phrase because she's listening to everything. And oh, no, but, but we, don't, we don't save any of it, but I mean. I'm sure they probably tell us they do. You know that 50 page accept thing that nobody's That's ever what, read? That's what, yeah. It might be in there. Yeah, it's on like page 37. Yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna read it, and this no. is like a conspiracy video. Neither is I'm any. too lazy. <laughs> oh my god. That whole thing? <laughs> 50 pages? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Wait, Zepeto is freaking me out. Cut to them in a marketing meeting just being like, let's add white noise, we can get a shame dog. <laughs> <laughs> They'll do it, we know this queen. <laughs> <laughs> People will tweet him. Oh, it's, gonna, no. it's gonna blow up. It's a pet of one. <laughs> <laughs> you get a text, it's like, we'll always win. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs>
Because they're actually the truth. <laughs> <laughs> theories that some companies have been using Google search to hide some of their secrets. One of the creepiest examples is Disney possibly making the movie Frozen just to hide the fact that Walt Disney might have frozen his body after he died. Thank God you heard me. I'm Walt Disney. Now a lot of people say this is a rumor. Is Great Uncle Walt frozen underneath the Pirates of the Caribbean? He is not. We don't have him in an ice cube tray in the freezer and no. According to the president of Cryonics Society of California, Walt Disney wanted to be frozen. These are some of our patients. We call them patients because we don't regard them as dead people. There's, there's people in those cans. And he wanted scientists to be able to revive him in the future, and possibly give him immortality. I'd give anything to be there with you. So if we could see through these, we would see people just kind of like floating like this, or? Now, of course, the majority of people think this is all just weird science that will never work. Scientists are freezing endangered animal species. We have fully frozen wood frogs. Their hearts are stopped, their brains are flatlined, yet they're still alive. But the most amazing thing is the fact that the wood frog comes back to life. Immortality might be ours if we could manage to do the same. We, we don't have that ability yet. Now we have this medical miracle. A Pennsylvania man found frozen to death. And then, over the next few days, miraculously, his heart started beating on its own. No, I've never even heard anything like this. This is, this is it's amazing. His body was frozen solid. He had, of course, no pulse. Their hearts are stopped. He's got no brain activity. Their brains are flatlined. His body is frozen solid. Yep. When the body heated up, the body came back alive. All those Kyle cryogenics people give are going <laughs> to... Yes. <laughs> we can live forever. But you're going to shed a few happy tears. I mean, think about it. Anybody searching Walt Disney Frozen from 2011 and before were only looking to see if Walt Disney had his body or head frozen. So how would Disney hide those search results? By making a worldwide hit film called Disney's Frozen is officially the highest grossing animated movie of all time. I mean, just look at the search results from 2011 and before. Yeah, pages of information about Walt Disney's head possibly being frozen. And then look at the search results now. Completely frozen. The patient is immediately placed in an ice bath. Certain patients choose to preserve their heads alone. Heads alone. His body was frozen solid, so it was preserved essentially. When the body heated up, the body came back alive. I'd give anything to be there with you. But this seems to be one of those times I'm tied down here at the studio night and day. Since the beginning, stores have been doing everything they can to get our attention. How to get on the first page of Google in 24 hours. I am so good at store after store after store marking down merchandise. Sending you endless amounts of coupons. There's gotta be an easier way. Two senior citizens got into a fight at a Costco over free piece of cheese. You're gonna love this story. Before you go searching for those slashed prices, going out of business sales, going out of business, 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 we have an alert for you. Don't mess with my cheese, bro. Your dream HD TV. This is a sale of epic proportions. Extra discount. Extra is running out. Get this Everything they can to get our attention. By order of the U.S. Bankruptcy Court, going out of business. Okay, some great deals in the store. Sign says it all. Everything must go, and unfortunately, that means the employees too. But the prices are great. No, you come in and it's just overwhelming the amount of toys. Twenty-five years, no severals. That's heartbreaking. At every Toys R Us and Babies R Us across America, across the country, some thirty-one thousand employees are looking for new jobs. 
You're not gonna get deals like this anytime soon. 33,000 employees that are out there without a job, with no severance pay. Think with the heart. That is extremely heartless. It's a great time to start shopping for Christmas. These workers who become close friends comfort each other. We need to go to Toys R Us. Selena Rawson is one of 31,000 Toys R Us employees losing their jobs and their benefits. Selena has cancer and is in the middle of her second round of chemo. By me having this cancer, I can't get health insurance. I tried. Don't mess with my cheese, bro. You gotta come. But one of the scariest tactics that stores use to get you to spend your money is subliminal messages. Psychology says red catches the eye. The color yellow encourages them to eat more. Catches the eat eye. More. Eat more. Eat more. Eat more. Just look at this video of somebody that found something hidden in the KFC commercial. The 99 cent snacker is it? Now, supposedly, when KFC got called out for this, they said that it was part of a competition and the first thousand people that see the dollar could win a prize. But it's been over 10 years since the commercial came out and there's been no contest, so clearly that was just a cover. Catches the eye. Now, many studies have been done on why KFC might have done this, and all the answers lead to KFC wanting us to subconsciously think about low prices when we think about their food. But it's not out of the ordinary for a fast food chain to do this. Just look at what happened 10 years ago when McDonald's got caught doing something even sneakier. Okay, so we're sitting here watching Iron Chef America. I noticed the screen blink red, slow motion forward, frame by frame. Getting closer. And look at this, a McDonald's ad right in the middle for just one frame. Of course they claim it was a glitch, but people saw through that. And there's tons of other things you probably have never noticed and it's gonna be all you think about. Coming up, right now. There you have it. For example, every picture of a watch or a clock that you've seen in an advertisement is set to 10-10. Every single one. And it's not just watch company. 1010 is even in movie posters, TV shows, pretty much any ad or billboard ever that has a watch. Lionel Engineer finally calls it a night. How do you think he'll want to get up in the morning? The Lionel Train 100th Anniversary Alarm Clock. So order now. Nothing sells more than sex. I mean, just look at this magazine. I bet you didn't even know there was a popular magazine called Sex, right? That's because there's no. These are all covers of a magazine that's actually called SFX. But if you look at almost all their covers, block out a part of the word that makes it look like sex to catch your attention. I will make you scream my name I know you make me do it The same girl I will make you scream my name I know you make me do the same Baby, make me scream your name Now this doesn't bother me that much until I saw that they were putting kids on the cover. Yeah, having the cast of Stranger Things in front of a big, bold sex feels too far for me. But the one place that's completely filled with subliminal messages is the place you would least expect. A daily battle is being waged in supermarkets all over this country. A battle for the customer's dollar. That's right, the grocery store. For you, it's an ordinary shopping trip, but for the supermarket, the products you see, where they are displayed, even what you smell, it's all to get you to buy. You are manipulated from the moment you walk in the door 
until you leave. Grocery stores purposefully oversize your cart, so it psychologically makes you feel like you haven't shopped enough. Yeah, you know what I do? I trick myself. I only allow myself to carry a basket, no cart. And also, as we go around the store, we would second replace baskets. Again, so it encourages that customer to carry on shopping. From the moment you walk into the grocery store, your mind and your actions are being manipulated. So how exactly is this place making me feel so well? Well, it's a funny thing, Renee. What's happened is you've entered, you're welcome, but you're also not allowed to leave. As you can see, the metaphorical doors are closing. Well, I could go out the exit. Well, you could, but you're not going to because you've already invested. The first thing that happens when you walk in is you get a big burst of air that comes straight from the bakery section, which is always placed right up front. Where you can, use human senses for more impulse sales. In this store, we cook fresh bread. It's dinner time. As this customer walks into the store, she smells our French bread that just came out of the oven, so she's making her way over there. That way, the smell gets your salivary glands going, and we all know that the hungrier you are, the more you want to buy. And then they put all of the essential items, like milk, eggs, and meat, at the very back of the store. That way, you have to walk through the whole store to get to them. Things like milk would be put further into the store to make people walk all the way through the store. And then they move the location of the eggs every few months just to confuse you and make you walk around more. And it seems like they're always randomly rearranging things in the middle of the night. Well, experts say this is all on purpose. They want you to get lost and confused. Stores hope you'll find extra items along the way. Losing focus makes you spend more money on unnecessary items. And have you ever wondered why the candy is at the very bottom of the shelf at the checkout stand, like right above the floor? Well, that's because they want it at eye level and reaching distance of the children. When it comes to getting you to buy certain items, it's all about the placement, including putting kids' items where the kids are gonna find them. This is why all the sweet cereals and candy is located between three to four feet high. So imagine that a child is in this cart. Notice what they're going to be seeing that's here at eye level, and even older children are gonna be seeing this at eye level. You wanna get those? They hope the kids will see the candy and then beg their parents to buy it. We're in the candy aisle. This is how Ellie looks right now. More characters, more colors. And it works. In this case, all the way to the floor. And that's where the two-year-old has, has a passion for where in this case. he has to get his honey nut Cheerios. Cheerios. He's got to get them, right? <laughs> At the... And that's why the gum is always on top. Adult stuff on top, kid stuff on the bottom. Okay, we place deliberately confectionery, children's level low, where we get that last impulse sale. I know. As you can see, our store layout is very important. Our customer came in for just a couple of things on her list, and she ended up taking a lot more. Now, grocery stores aren't the only place using subliminal tactics. Restaurants are also getting into mind tricks. Just look at the menus. Some places drop the dollar sign from the prices so you don't think about money when you're deciding on what to eat. A $28 burger seems a lot less expensive when it's just a $28 burger. There's also stores that pump fake smells out of the vents to trick your mind. One of the craziest examples I've seen is Disneyland that has something called a smell -itizer. And these are spread out through the whole park and it makes you smell things to jog your memory and entice you to shop. That smells like candy. It really does. And then in some high-end stores like Gucci or Prada, it's been said that employees are trained to be rude to you to get you to buy more. You want to prove to the world and to that condescending salesperson that you do belong there. And a study showed that it works. I want to just tell those sales associates that they need to get off their high horses. Rude. It's simply rude. Long story short, I did end up getting the pair of shoes that I wanted. Speaking of clothing stores, have you ever noticed how loud the music is in the store Hollister? Yeah, and it's not just that one. It's in every Hollister. There's videos from all across the country at different Hollisters, and all their music is blasting. Well, the reason they do this isn't to make it feel like a party. It's because the louder the music is, the more likely you are to buy something that's overpriced. When the music is soft, you can think about the price and decide whether or not you can afford it. But if the music is super loud, it can disorient you and make it hard to think. Then the bass makes your heart beat go up and gives you the same feeling as having anxiety. It's loud music. Like, I can't talk to anybody. It's so freaking loud in here. I see what you got this loud, obnoxious dumping music. Do, 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 do. Then they pump an intense cologne smell into the air vents to block another one of your senses and make you even more disoriented. In the place, it always smells like crap. They spray perfume in my face. I don't like perfume. You can smell it like a four short down. And they spray everywhere, all their clothes. I wasn't able to get within 20 feet of the store without just being drowned in just horrific cheap cologne. Yeah. 
It's bad. Then you look around the room and see pictures of hot guys and hot girls wearing the clothes and living the life that seems so much better than yours. Then you look up and see a mirror that they placed right in front of the shirt rack so that you can see how much worse you look than the models on the walls. Because what else is the purpose of having the mirrors right there? I mean, you're supposed to change in the dressing room, right? And then the song changes to something even louder and faster. And you give up and say fuck it. And you buy the expensive item and you leave. So it's Hollister. Now I wanted to go myself and see if Hollister was still using all of these tricks. So I went to a mall near my house to check it out. got there, I noticed that the lights weren't dimmed at all. And it's really Very dark good. in there too, so yeah, you don't like, even know I what hate, you're looking like, at. I hate dark places, I like light places. The posters on the wall didn't have half-naked models, and the music wasn't loud at all. It was probably too low. Like, I don't know the conspiracy. Music is really loud, and like, but it, it's not that loud. I just don't know what to do. So I talked to some employees there and I asked them what changed. The key points really aren't really highlighted in this particular Well, because she said they changed like, everything. And they told me that a lot of things changed after some lawsuits that happened a few years ago. Wait, what was the lawsuit? Right now, the company's going through like a rebranding. Lately, the music's gotten quieter, there's been more lights added. Namely, you'll no longer have to meet a certain standard of attractiveness to work there. The company recently found itself in front of the U.S. Supreme Court. They also told me things changed when the CEO left, and he was... <laughs> Abercrombie and Fitch founder Mike Jeffries is stepping down as a CEO. The company still remains under fire for its CEO's controversial comments. That he only wanted good-looking people to shop at the stores, only skinny people to shop at the stores. Because according to him, anyone who's a plus size isn't cool enough to shop in Abercrombie and Fitch. Let's talk about him for a second. The former CEO of Hollister also owned Abercrombie and Fitch. You know, Abercrombie and Fitch, the place where they had shirtless guys standing outside of the store to entice you to come in. Oh, I'm okay. Well, Hollister has something similar, but slightly more creepy. They used to have models walking around the store in their clothes, talking to people. I went for an interview uh, for a model position. And basically, model just walks around folds and, you know, looks cool, like too cool for school and looks bored and all that. Now, since the lawsuit, they changed the name from model to brand representative. And here's a job description I found online. A brand representative inspires others through a charismatic and sophisticated presence in the store. They engage customers in a genuine way to drive sales. They wanted everybody working there pretty much just to be models. They wanted all the sales clerks to look like your biggest high school crushes. My manager specifically told me, only talk to people who are attractive. If you don't think they're good looking, don't bother going up to them. And it kind of was the same exact process when it came to um, people applying as well. And I haven't been offered a job once. What's up with that? I like to work. I swear to fuck, this guy looks me in the eyes and says, I don't know, probably because you're not attractive enough. The least attractive model, they would have them be in like the, the clearance section. But uh, jokes on that guy, because I did end up working at Hollister. It was in the back doing stock where they keep all the ugly people. But hey, I, st I still got the job. Here's a clip of a former employee talking about the interview process. It's not a real fucking interview. It's just to see if you're good looking or not. And just to show you how creepy the CEO was, these are actual quotes that he said. A lot of people don't belong in our clothes. That's why we hire good looking people in the stores. Good looking people attract other good looking people and we want to market to cool, good looking people. We don't market to anyone other than that. We only retail to the cool kids. Hello, hey, uh, where are your cargo pants? We don't want fat people wearing it. We don't want this. We don't have them. Bye. But we do have cargo pants. But we told them we didn't. <laughs> he also said, I don't want our core customers to see people who aren't as hot as them wearing our clothing. When they have uh, stuff that's ripped, they refuse to donate their clothes. He'd rather burn unused clothing than donate it. They'll burn it because they don't want less than cool people 
wearing the clothes. Who the hell is Mike Jeffries to tell you what is and isn't attractive? And I was shooting like went through the door like all these shows people turned to look at me like I was a fucking freak, like I didn't belong there. Also at Abercrombie, jeans and ripped skirts used to only go up to a large. They essentially just don't want overweight women wearing their clothes. This is the absolute largest size you can buy there. Fuck you people! I can't fucking believe this shit! It's just shocking the kinds of things he said for no reason. That means no extra large for girls and definitely no double X. You only want to show your clothes to rich, young, attractive, hip people, but they were fuck you! Bullshit. I don't know. Either. I'm throwing away all my all my Abercrombie right now, sir. I got no horse in this race except the guy seems like a douche. So even if you're skinny, I wouldn't go there. The largest Abercrombie women's pants size is a 10, whereas at H&M it's a 16, and at American Eagle it's an 18. So this whole store was literally like a movie set. I don't know. It seemed like I was on the set of a movie. All the girls there were all really pretty, and so like everyone had a crush on everyone because everyone was attractive. There was always some sort of boyfriend drama, like everyone like had Loki drama. Who was dating who? Who was sleeping with who? We're working there. Crazy stuff happens like all the time. People would party together. People would hang out with each other. The managers are like 21. People would do like drugs, have alcohol, drugs. I'm not gonna say what or where or when. Models sleeping with managers, it happened a lot. Yellow shots, you had people dancing on tabletops, crazy, crazy stuff. It was insane. I can't even like describe it to you. Anyway, let me get into the tea about what it was actually like working there. So it was awful. I'm not gonna lie. I hated it. I only worked there because I wanted the discount and I only worked there because I wanted to belong. But then of course you have the CEO saying that he's all for equality. I think what we represent sexually is healthy. It's playful. It's not gay. It's not straight. It's not black. It's not white. It's not about labels. But in 2003, there was a lawsuit against Abercrombie where it was being claimed that any Asian American, African American, and Latino individual who were hired at Abercrombie or relegated to work in the back in the stock rooms where they could not be seen also add I was the only African-American black girl working there you know when you walk into that store you just saw me but not really and I'll tell you why I worked in the back I wasn't a cashier they didn't think they thought I was stupid man so it just so happens that my station was all the way in the back of the store <laughs> like I rarely came in contact with customers in my position this shit was like I was in the back doing stocking there was another girl th who was white that started the job she was working the front of the store before I was mind you I had about six months under my belt already mind you I'm the only one that I was working for that long in the back so once everybody left I was gonna be in there by myself no oh, it is great being greeted by everyone behind the scenes so this guy literally created this weird Pleasantville movie set that was filled with music that's super, super loud. And I love the music. I was like, I wanna dance all day long. Models walking around in the clothes pretending to be your friends so you'll buy more. The only pros were cute girls were working there. And it's all white people and no fat people. <laughs> there were some disrespectful ass people that disrespected me. I wanted to fight, but I didn't do it because I'm a classy ass bitch. Overall, polisher seemed really good oh i didn't even tell you guys so i people are rude i don't no 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 the social life at holiday is really cool so if you're going um for a job where you want to meet new people they were even on some like mm, the black girls here like you know they were just not yeah, hollister was just one of the best times of my life i had a party so i ain't stepping my ass up in the hollisters again fuck yeah i was just treated like trash <laughs> like they did not care it was pretty cool and then she showed me how to use the website where you can look at your schedule and everything but on my break bitch i cried i called my sister and stuff so i just kept getting disrespected oh and just in case you're thinking well maybe the lawsuit got thrown out no it didn't it was actually settled and they ended up paying 40 million dollars to make it go away if there is a hell mm -hmm. it's possible they send me down to abercrombie and fish please make it stop i'm so sorry jesus I promise I won't do it again. I love my job. Hashtag so chill.
But like, how the hell are we supposed to believe that? Like, why wouldn't they say that everything? Because they're like, okay, listen, like, yes, people probably are gonna find out that they're always being recorded, we have all the footage, we have everything, but- <laughs> Oh, yeah! Got to remember the Apple keynote being like, all right, you found our teeth. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, they've made us so dependent on these that it doesn't even matter, because we're no. still gonna use it, because like, we can't live without it. Why can't? It's <laughs> Back facing cameras filming my POV, front facing cameras filming everything I do, my microphone's filming everything that it hears. It's literally a 360 of my whole fucking life. Let's break it down then. I have a really interesting question. What are they after? What is their main thing? What are they trying to get? Hold on. You have to say what you said to me earlier that freaked Can you me out. Actually, wait. Let's act it out. Oh, okay. I'll be Apple. Well, no. You're Garrett. Oh, just me? That's Andrew? Easy. Andrew. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. I'm just an right? Yes, yeah, so you're just you, and Andrew is from an unknown should place. Should you, uh, should I pretend this is the, uh, memory card? Whoa, yeah. I love when your channel turns into an improv channel. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I'm Garrett, I better answer the door. Yep, Garrett Watts, I recognize you from the videos. Uh, it's gonna be pretty straightforward with you, here's a memory card. We got, uh, some stuff that you might wanna see. We've been recording you. Okay. And, uh, it's gonna be... Uh, Fifty thousand dollars. If you want us to keep it silent from everybody else, so. Th that's a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I would just tweet about that and be pretty upset. Well, if you tweeted about it, then we would release all of the things <gasps> that you said about your best friend that you said that you've never said anything bad about. Oh my god! Or pictures of me shirtless. Yeah. I would pay right away. <laughs> I would like give them my PayPal like account. That, yeah. Oh, please like. Skit. What? It's like a Brett Paris skit. Oh my That's god! That's the worst thing I've ever heard. <laughs> I got an A on my math test. Good job, Brad. I got an A plus. Better job, Bryce. Wait. Yeah, blackmailing. Got you, Apple. You never. Or do they got you? Oh, that's where you edit. That's where you cut, and everyone's freaking out. Think about it. What is the apple from? Adam and Eve. And they're gone. And what happened when Eve took a bite out of it? You should probably, oh god, this is great, but she got in trouble. Uh, yeah, sent them both to hell. And what is the Apple logo? Oh, an apple with a bite. Oh, they are freaking me out, and you are too! Oh. I'm Eve. <laughs> <laughs> and I was sent here to warn all of you. Oh my god. Don't bite the apple. Wait, too late. Get an android. <laughs> I would rather go to hell than get an android. <laughs> like, take my pics, take my info, I'm not getting an android. Uh. <laughs> Wait, I just thought about that. That's crazy, right? What? The fucking Adam Eve thing. The Apple just, that literally is their logo. Just theories, not facts. Now, as soon as the fire started, people were blowing up Twitter with conspiracy theories. The reason people were being so suspicious is because there was pictures and footage being put out on Twitter where it looked like there was direct energy weapons. Now, if you don't know what that is, simply put, it's... That's right, lasers. Now, if you look at some of these pictures, it does look like there is lasers coming from the sky and striking the ground. Now, the theory isn't that they're coming from outer space. The theory is that they're coming from military aircrafts, and it's very specific to where the lasers are hitting. It moves, by definition, at the speed of light. And it can be used against a variety of targets. It's more precise than a bullet. It really is a point and shoot. Um, we see it, focus on it, and we can negate that party. You know, you just have to emphasize, you know, if, if you snap your fingers and, and, and the, the fire can blow up that quickly, it's, it's almost instantaneous. People think that the government might be lighting certain locations on fire for a reason. All right, this is not gonna be pretty. You could say the pictures are photoshopped or that they're just fire tornadoes, but then this video started to spread. I'm we'll gonna try to start, stop it right at the very beginning of the fire. This is a video of a man who is watching the fire movement on a fire map. It's because I found something that looks pretty, uh, I don't know, incriminating if you ask me. Now there's a moment where he saw something that looked strange. It's about ready to start. All right, see that? And when he slowed it down, he realized what it could be. 
See if you noticed what I noticed pretty much right away. Okay, right here. You see that line, folks? And those are all uh, uh, energy flashes. And I don't know if it was direct energy weapons or, or, uh, or what it was. And there's our strike. And then the fire starts. You see it? Now, another reason a lot of people think that direct energy weapons might have started some of these fires is because of the act. Have you seen the video footage of the destruction of these fires? If you look at overhead footage of the neighborhoods that were affected by the fires, you'll notice that the houses are all burned to the ground, but then there's trees and mailbox surrounding them that are untouched. Can you see what I'm seeing right here? All the structures are burned down with the trees still standing up. How did the fire weasel its way into these nooks and crannies. This is unbelievable. I believe that directed energy weapons are being used. What, what other options could there be besides a, a high torch directed energy weapon? Give me a freaking break. This was a forest fire? This was a forest fire? This was a forest fire? There's none that I could think of. They are out to take our lives of us and our children. Can you say directed energy weapon? The only way you can do that is to superheat the inside, which you can do with a directed energy weapon. Also, the fact that there's neighborhoods where there's one house that's burned and then the rest are fine, or three houses in a row that are burned and then one right next to it that's totally fine. Over the road, another house completely destroyed and behind it, a home that is relatively untouched. What's going through my mind is my neighbors have all lost their homes but mine. It seems like the fire is selective. It's incredibly effective at what it does. Um, we see it. One house is burnt down. Focus on it. Target lock uh, next to a house that's untouched. And we can negate that target. This is fire. startling evidence of a directed energy attack. So this house survived, Starbucks survived. But right across the street, this place got trashed. Right next to them, they survived. It's just weird how this just picks and chooses. Been through a lot of these scenarios. This one's a shocker. Real lasers, one of the key advantages that they provide is that they are invisible. You actually can't see them. You just see this damage suddenly starting to blow something up. Came out of nowhere. Goodbye. And it's not just lasers. There's theories that some of the fires might have started from inside the house. Firefighters had already been there. They thought they had put out the flames there, but a massive flames broke out inside of the condo complex and spread from one to the other. It's hard to tell from the outside. Now, if you look at the news footage, you'll notice that some houses are burning from within and the outside is always the last to burn. Now, it could be because the roof caught on fire first and fell inside, but it also could be because appliances inside the house might have been overpowered on purpose. Think about it. What's one of the items that's in every house that we all know is super dangerous, but we still have it? That's right, microwaves. Just think about how easy it would be for, I don't know, an electricity company to purposely overpower any house they wanted to make sure that that microwave combusted. And that microwave is right next to the stove, which is full of gas, which would explode. So what you end up with is something like an explosion. That pops up in front of them. Okay, so we're gonna back up just a little bit when we hear that popping noise. Which would then cause the entire kitchen to catch fire, making the house burn from the inside out, leaving all the trees and grass outside fine. How did a forest fire come in and leave the trees but char the homes down to the ground? A woof. It was just like somebody turned all the gas burners on all on the entire field and it just went up like nothing. It was poof. So I know what you're thinking, why? Now one of the theories that was going viral involved a fire map. And people said that the path of the fire was identical to the blueprint of the high speed rail system. Now I'm not gonna fully go into this theory because it was pretty quickly debunked. I mean, if you put the maps on top of each other, they don't really line up and it's not actually the fire path, it was the evacuation zones, but that's a whole other thing. But there's still many other theories as to why the fire started. And one of them involves a very scary place called the Santa Susana Field Laboratory. So this was a massive government testing lab, and it was used for testing rockets. In area four of the lab is where they used to experiment on nuclear reactors. Well, in 1959, there was a partial nuclear meltdown, and the area to this day has still not been completely cleaned up. 
Some of the fuel rods partially melted. The damage turned out to be very extensive. Now, these practices were halted a long time ago, but as we know, contamination doesn't just go away. That means there's been dangerous nuclear waste all over the area for the last 60 years. It will take centuries to clean up the groundwater at San Susana. Centuries. Is this site seriously contaminated? The site has a lot of contamination. Well, the Santa Susana Field Lab is also famous for another reason. It's where the Woolsey fire started. There is mounting evidence that the fire started at the Santa Susana Field Lab. It's an area that is still highly contaminated with radioactive waste. That's right, the fire started inside that area at an intersection called Test Area Road. Huh. It was the site of one of the very first atomic reactor meltdowns in the entire world. Not just nuclear, but different fuels, experiments for the space program. Now why the fire started is still unclear, but the theory is that the government purposely planted explosions in that test area so that they could release an abundance of nuclear chemicals into the air. Because some of the almost 3,000 acres that encompasses that site contaminated with those toxic materials that I just told you about, which is one of the worst in the world, that's where the California fire is partly now burning. Now, over the years, there's been reports that show living close to this nuclear meltdown site has already caused an increased risk in cancer and so many other things to the people that have been living close to that. There are cancer clusters of various kinds of exotic cancers all around this site. 0.003% of the nation is that average for childhood cancer. I can name 10 children that I know personally who live within three to five miles of my house. So of course, when there's a fire there and there's a huge cloud of smoke that is billowing, that is probably filled with nuclear chemicals, and it's traveling all across Southern California. You can see all of that smoke and haze continues to blanket most of the Southland tonight. People are gonna freak out. Uh, the wind is just pushing all of the smoke in all of directions. When the fire incinerated all of the grass and the trees, that, that probably released a lot more contamination. What can be in the smoke and is presumably there is radionuclides plus chemical toxins. It's putting all of us no, no longer just at risk. We have been harmed. Now, I started freaking out too. I mean, everybody in my neighborhood was wearing masks. And it wasn't just conspiracy theorists freaking out about it. It was everyone. Look at the hand of his mask. Oh my god. We're literally just in the apocalypse right now. Even Kim Kardashian, who said, shocked and furious to learn smoke from the Woolsey fire started at a former nuclear testing site, Santa Susana Field Lab, and it's potentially radioactive. And the city officials and government was denying everything. They're saying there's nothing to worry about. They've checked it. Everything is okay. Now, eventually, they did do tests, and they showed that, oh, the air actually well, isn't that bad, and it's fine. But those were the government's tests. Why shouldn't we well, believe they always them? say that. Well, well why shouldn't they don't, we You shouldn't. Why? You can't. There was other tests that were done that showed the opposite. From the off-site study that Dr. Cohen did, that even without a fire, in a windy day, especially when you dry and a lot of dust, that the, that the dust can, can travel for miles. Right now, more people will have died because of the after effects of 9-11 than died that day. Now there's another theory for why the Woolsey fire started, and it might have been to distract us from something even more suspicious and even more devastating, the campfire. You see the air around right now, it looks like a, uh, like a war zone, a little post-apocalyptic. Uh, that's due to the campfire. The campfire started eight hours before the Woolsey fire, and it lasted 17 days. It's the most dangerous and most destructive wildfire in California history, and it's the fourth deadliest in US history. Except on the news, we heard way more about the Woolsey fire. Which is crazy, because just to put in perspective, the Woolsey fire burned 1,600 buildings and three lives were lost. The campfire burned 18,793 buildings and 85 lives were lost. The television reports um, simply don't do it justice. Filbert, I don't, I'm like lost here because this, it's unrecognizable here. The entire town of Paradise was completely destroyed and the videos and images of the fire was straight out of the movie. Until you actually look at the people that were affected and what's left up there in Paradise, you don't really see it as real. This is it. This is the hottest it's gonna get. Behind the fucking house, Man is no match. Nature. Paradise is gone. Paradise is lost. And it's getting close to Chico. There's about 100,000 people in Chico. Get the fuck out of Chico. 
Chico. Get out of Chico. I don't know. But from what I heard, Paradise, California no longer exists. I mean, I've never seen anything like this. It was awful. People trying to drive out of their neighborhoods while their cars are surrounded by flames. I mean, we had to drive. I could feel the heat in my car as I'm driving. It's getting hot. Okay, keep your windows rolled up. I can't see. I can't either, but we're okay. Oh, hold on. Hold on. People having to run out of town on foot, but because of all the smoke, they didn't know if they were running away from or toward the flames. 15-year-old kids that dad didn't know where to go just started throwing people in the truck. It was crazy, yet all I heard about when I turned on the news was the Woolsey fire. So I was that. Well, right as people started talking about campfire on Twitter, a lot of pictures and videos were getting released of what people thought were direct energy weapons. People were also questioning, how did this fire happen? Why did it spread so fast? Why weren't people evacuated? The town councilman says only about one in eight people told them they got a mass notification that day. How did this become such a huge disaster with no warning? So you got no phone call? No. You got no alert on your cell phone? Now. There's a lot of people, they didn't even have time to get their stuff. And those that did, they had very limited, very limited time. All of those things combined created a lot of conspiracies. And then right when people started tweeting about it, and those pictures of the direct energy weapons were going viral, boom, the Woolsey fire. And the Woolsey fire isn't just any old fire. It's a fire that started right in a neighborhood where all the big celebrities live. And you know how much the news loves celebrities. A lot of celebrities have also lost their homes as the fire rages on. Celebrities who live in the fire-ravaged areas have been sharing their own stories on social media. We haven't been told to evacuate just yet. Several other celebrities, including Alyssa Milano, Rain Wilson, and Cher. After Gerard Butler posted this video on Snapchat of what's left. Man, I ain't never seen a fire in my fucking life. Thick posted this photo on Instagram. That is extremely scary. I've never seen anything like that. Miley Cyrus also lost her home. So of course now the whole world is talking about. We'll see. It's not campfire. You think they got fires in the hood in Carroll City, bitch? Irish American actor Pierce Brosnan. This is footage of the home of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star. Hey, Loki, I'm kind of scared. Her animals made it out safely. Welcome to my home in Malibu. Uh, my backyard is literally on fire. Swear to God. Holy shit. Charlie, we're fine. We're at Duma Beach. Ah! Get the fuck out! Bitch! Bitch, get out! And a few hours later, it's like the campfire didn't even happen. And all of the conspiracies and questions about it started to disappear. Because everyone wanted to know, is Kim and Kanye's house okay? Heavenly Father, please help us. There was an image of this giraffe that I guess everyone knows there, Stanley the giraffe, in Malibu. It really stirred up, you know, there were celebrities tweeting about Stanley and... People are concerned. What can you tell us about Stanley? Well, Stanley is kind of an infamous giraffe. If you go on Instagram, very, very popular. I wasn't able to actually meet Stanley the giraffe because Kylie Jenner was there. Don't know if the house made it or not. Now the final theory, and to me the most realistic, is that maybe the government didn't start these fires. Maybe some of these fires were started by homeowners themselves. Now every year in California, we're warned that the Santa Ana winds are dangerous and can cause brush fires across our mountains. And of course the big concern is even here are these winds. The winds are expected, as we've been reporting, to flare up big time tomorrow. And all it takes is just one spark. And every year, pretty much at the same time, multiple fires break out. Pretty much happens every year. When it doesn't, it's like never going to snow. Well, let's say I'm a homeowner who doesn't want to live in my house anymore can't afford it or just wants a change. And now it's that time of year where my area is affected by fires. What could I do? Oh, so I'm excited to burn this place down, man. It's gonna be cool. So, here goes. Now I know the idea of somebody setting their house on fire sounds crazy, but it's definitely something that's happened a lot. I told you I can't just have some fire. Let, let it burn. Let it burn. Someone just set a fire intentionally, I just can't even comprehend that. People have been setting their houses on fire and collecting insurance money for years. Bye bye house, sorry. But the 
problem is when you do that, you usually get caught because they do an investigation and they find out where the fire started. Boom, fire happens. And you got the police department, part of the fire department out there. You have fencing, people fencing up your property. This was an accident. Yeah, that's what they all say. What, cooking? But if you lived in Southern California, and it's around that time where the Santa Ana winds are picking up. And for now, insurance companies are acting very quickly to help those in need in these wildfires. And there's already a huge fire warning within a 50 mile radius of your house. Until that comes back on and these winds die down, this neighborhood will remain under evacuation. Technically, if your house did catch fire, it could have just been the winds or an ember. The embers could end up being picked up by those winds. Or a hot spot, and nobody would question it. Oh no, not again. It's okay, Betty. Your insurance covers fire damage. And you get a huge payday. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> company, I would definitely be thinking about reducing the number of customers I have in the state. Now, I talked to somebody who's very well versed in the home insurance world, and they told me that this theory isn't that crazy. So I'm going to act out exactly what he said to me. It's definitely not uncommon, Shane, especially when you're in a neighborhood that's overpopulated with ducks. And then I said, ducks? Yes, ducks. When you see ducks, they're so serene and so calm and they look like they don't have a care in the world. Imagine how easy it must be to be a duck. I know, they got like no concern. They're floating around and just trying to follow the crowd. But if you look just beneath the surface, their legs are moving fast. They're just trying to stay up the water. They're panicking. They can't pay their bills. They can't pay for their house. Their feet are just going. They spent all their money on Gucci. The IRS is going to come. They're so desperate. So what do they do? They have wonderful web feet to propel them along. And then he said, the first thing I thought when I saw the fire spreading to Calabasas, the land of former rappers, bankrupt musicians, ex-reality stars, and actors who can't get cast anymore. You're stressed out, you know, and you're looking for some kind of way to kind of escape the darkness or the finances, right? Ducks. The Woolsey fire has destroyed homes in so many communities, Calabasas among them. So that's most of the theories. Direct energy weapons, electric companies making our appliances explode, government wanting to make room for better, bigger things, the railway clearing a path, government wanting to distract us from things we should be really focusing on, and of course the idea of insurance fraud. Now there's a lot of theories and not a lot of answers, but one thing is for sure, this was devastating and it was very real and so many people need help. So I'm gonna be putting links down below and there's a bunch of ways that you guys can help those who were affected. And hopefully soon, we find out why this happened. Apple promises to fix a major glitch that lets people eavesdrop on you. Customers first noticed the glitch today. I didn't pick up the phone yet. How would that make any sense? Some people said that they could hear the person they called even before that person picked up. Oh, you didn't really hear. She yeah, I did. Yes, we did. You heard it. Apple says it will have a software update to fix the bug later this week. Until that happens, experts suggest you disable FaceTime. One, two, three. back there and I'm like, what is on there? Yeah, I did hear what she said about that. Well, she has to find out. I'm pretty sure Priority did. Yeah, was, but he's that good. I'm scared about talking about this on my channel. You're the security camera. If I was like an investigative reporter, right? I feel like I'm allowed to say all this. I'll send it to my lawyer. Because, <laughs> yeah. like, that's just the facts. Right. No, wait, no, it's not. It's just an opinion. 